This is a piece of fool's gold and this is what I've been using as a detector in my crystal radios lately. And the, uh, the formula for this is it's iron sulfide. So it's one iron atom and one sulfur atom stuck together. And down here is galena. This is also a uh, sulfur compound. This is one lead atom and one sulfur atom. So this is why you find these together because you know, there's sulfur in both of them. And when there's iron or lead, then it forms this, this compound. But as a kid, I always used galena, which is the lead sulfide. And I just, uh, I priced it online. It was really expensive. In this area, there's supposed to be some, I can't find it. I grew up in the Midwest. And I mean, you can start from Canada and go all the way down to Mexico. And all the states in the middle of the United States have uh, galena and the galena mines. And it was uh, mined during World War I, World War II. So there used to be just piles of this stuff lying around. You could, if you knew where to drive, you'd go out and pick it up. Okay. But that's not possible right now. And when I ordered online, they want like 20 bucks for a little piece of it. And that's just outrageous. So the question is, can I make my own? And that's kind of where I'm going today. I, uh, I'm a little bit nervous about this because first of all, I mean, you know, lead, I've always given the warning that, uh, lead is toxic and the fumes are toxic. The metal's toxic. It's hot it, when it's molten. It'll really cause serious burns, start fires, that kind of stuff. And that's when soldering. So let alone when you're melting uh, larger amounts of it. And then sulfur. Well, sulfur is kind of nature's plastic. It is, uh, yeah, when it's solid, it's only slightly toxic. So when you get the yellow powder or whatever, it's, yeah, it's not too terrible. But uh, when you start to burn it, it uh, can ruin your lungs. It'll ruin your sense of smell. I permanently lost my sense of smell because as a kid, I would play around with the stuff and I'd burn it and the fumes, whatever, you know, it's a beautiful yellow color, but as uh, yeah, fumes are bad. Uh, it burns a clear blue so that it's hard to see burning. And also like plastic, it can splatter and send little burning bits all over the place and set you on fire. It sticks to skin, it burns and all that stuff. So those are the warnings. Okay. So what my plan is, so let me show you, I'll, uh, change things here a little bit and I'll show you what I'm thinking about doing to make my own Galena. Here are the two things I'm going to use. One of them is sulfur and the other is solder and the ratio in weight is 6.5 grams of solder to one gram of sulfur. Now you say, wait a minute. I happen to know that, uh, most solder is like 60, 40 at 60% lead and 40% tin. Well, the nice thing is that the lead is a semiconductor and it's a pretty good semiconductor. Tin is also a semiconductor. And in fact, they're thinking about, or they're trying to actually use it in solar panels to replace some of the materials in there because tin sulfide is much cheaper. So my plan is to chop up the solder as fine as possible and put the, that ratio in here into this little metal cup. This is just a steel ball I found online. I wish it was a square edge cup, but it's round. This is the best I could find and I am going to mix it. Now, again, the ratio is 6.5 to one. If you're a chemist, you would do that and you would do it in some kind of a situation where the sulfur won't catch fire. But what happens is if you put exactly uh, that 6.5 to one ratio, the sulfur will catch fire. It'll burn in the air and then your ratio will decrease and you will no longer have that ratio. So, uh, what I'm planning on doing is just getting, uh, about 10 grams of solder. So enough to basically fill this, mix it with enough sulfur that there'll be excess sulfur so that when it burns away in the atmosphere, that, uh, there's still enough left to react with the tin and lead in the solder and give me my mixture. Okay. Well, that's it. I guess the next thing to do is just go do it. This is my heating rig. This is the little metal cup I'm going to use. As you can see, uh, this is one gram of lead. So I'm not going to use 10 grams of lead as in my earlier calculations. And this is half a gram of sulfur. So obviously all of this is not going to fit in there. 
And this is obviously also not the ratio of 6.5 to 1, but as we said earlier, a lot of the sulfur is going to burn off and not have time to react with the, with the uh, lead. And so that's where I am right now. I'm going to chop up this lead very finely and I'm going to put it in here um, and mix it and set it on fire. Uh, again, you need respirator, you need uh, goggles, all that protection. The other thing I need to point out is that sulfur burns at half the temperature at which lead melts. So before the lead is even uh, up to temperature, up to melting, this stuff's going to catch fire. And again, bad fumes and all that stuff. So, okay, well, I just need to do that. And of course, I lost the video of actually cooking it. But uh, what I had was this lid this is a piece of stainless steel and i just packed it in here up to the brim with the mixture of sulfur and lead lit the flame and let it cook uh, of course i have a respirator and face protection all that stuff let it cook until there was uh, the sulfur had burned off you can see the blue flame that comes out from underneath it or barely see it i should say and i, I didn't know what was going to happen to be honest i'm not a chemist uh, you know, sulfur can start popping, especially if it's damp, and start throwing stuff out of there. The lid was to keep as much oxygen away as possible so that the uh, sulfur would react with the lid first. And then I was occasionally touching the lid with a solder to make sure that it was the uh, temperature to be, uh, that it would melt the, melt the lid. And then uh, I would take the respirator off long enough every once in a while to smell and see if I could still smell the sulfur burning. And once the, I couldn't smell it anymore, then I determined it was probably done. I let it go for another minute or so just to make sure. And then I blew out the flame and let it start cooling on its own. So that's where we are right now. We've got this mixture. Um, it's been cooling. I don't know if it's cool enough yet. I don't want to... Uh, Galena grows in the ground very slowly and I want to make sure that the crystals get to be as big as possible so I'm just letting it go by itself. Well, we can see some metallic something right here. And I gave it a quick test on the crystal radio and I can hear something It's not. it's not great. But this black stuff needs to be removed because it's apparently just, well, it's um, sulfur and it's not galena. It's just like sulfur oxide. And I don't know if, oh, there we go, got a little bit more. So yeah, I just need to clean the sulfur off of here and it is uh, the chunks are breaking up. So it looks like this was a fail. Yeah, the lead and the sulfur did not fully integrate. Uh, the temperature did not get high enough, long enough. That was a uh, failed experiment in trying to make my own galena. I think there's two things wrong. One of them is the temperature wasn't high enough, long enough. And the other thing is that the lead was not uh, fine enough and it should have been mixed more thoroughly with the sulfur and then in a in a uh, vessel that was more airtight you should never cook something in something that's completely airtight like a screw on lid because then you've got a bomb but uh, yeah just a lid that would sit on here and not let oxygen come in contact with it the uh, washer wasn't good enough it wasn't sitting down on there so okay well lesson learned um, and maybe that'll save you some time uh, doing this experiment. This uh, needs to be improved on. Okay, well, that was it for today's uh, attempt at making galena for our crystal radios.